What's poppin' people? Welcome back to your friendly hood. Today, I'm continuing my series where I answer your questions about Christianity. I forgot to mention this in the last episode, but if you have any questions that you want answered in this series, you can email them to me at yourfriendlyhood at protonmail.com. Today, I'm going to be answering two questions that really trips up a lot of Christians, but I would put Christians in quotes. These questions typically come from people who see another Christian evangelizing. As you guys know, I'm a big proponent of evangelizing. You know, I do online evangelism with this YouTube channel, but I'm also a supporter of, you know, getting out on the streets and, you know, bringing the gospel to people who most of the time are unwilling. But while you're evangelizing, whether it be online or in real life, you'll have people that come up to you and they'll say something like this. Jesus said to love your neighbor. You're not being very loving. The reason why people say this is because the gospel has two parts. The message of Christianity has two parts. There's the bad news and the good news. And the bad news is that sin is bad. People go to hell. God's going to judge all of us when we die. People who sin go to hell. And if you just want a list of what types of people go to hell, the best verse to read from is 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So what Paul's saying there when he's writing to the Corinthians, he's saying these are the type of people that don't go to heaven. People that have sex outside of marriage or sleeping around with a bunch of guys, they don't go to heaven. Men who aren't strong, who are weak, they don't go to heaven. And also if they start wearing dresses, that's also a sin. People who abuse themselves, cut themselves, go to hell. People who steal, people who are jealous, people who are addicted to drugs, go to hell. People who talk crap behind others' backs, go to hell. None of these people are going to inherit the kingdom of God. They are not going to heaven. And if they're not going there, where are they going? They're going to hell. And this message, which is a biblical message, is very offensive. I read that list. Most people fall on that list. And if you don't fall exactly on that list, you probably fall somewhere in the margins. You know, maybe you don't sleep around with a hundred people, but you watch a hundred girls on your phone every day. Maybe you're not an alcoholic, but you smoke weed all the time. You can't live without it. You get the jitters when you stop. So this is an offensive thing because what is that saying? If someone wants to read that to me, that basically means that I'm so evil that I deserve to go to hell. And so people's rebuttal to this will be, well, doesn't Jesus say to love your neighbor, they basically say that being judgmental, judging people for the things that they do and saying that what someone's doing is evil, that's not loving, that's being judgmental, that's being hateful. What most people don't know though when they quote Jesus saying love thy neighbor as yourself is that Jesus is actually quoting God in the Old Testament. The specific verse that he's quoting is Leviticus chapter 19 verses 17 and 18. Thou shall not hate thy brother in in your heart, you shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You shall not avenge or bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, for I am the Lord. So what God is doing here is he is defining what does it mean to love your neighbor? What is the difference between hating your neighbor and loving your neighbor? What's interesting here though, is that God says that a part of love Loving your neighbor is judging them. You might have missed it because it's written in old English, but let me read it to you. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. Easy to understand. Then he says, you shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. What does that word rebuke mean? Well, you look up the dictionary definition, it means to harshly criticize. Someone tries to steal a candy bar from a store and the store owner starts yelling at that kid. That's a rebuke. He's rebuking them 
for doing something wrong. So what God's basically saying here is that when you see your neighbor committing sin, do not suffer sin upon them. So when you see them committing a sin, when you see them doing something evil, you have to tell them that they're doing something evil. Because sometimes people don't realize that their actions are bad. Sometimes people are not thinking straight. They're in some weird headspace. You know, they're overcome by their emotions and they need a voice of reason to get their thinking straight. A way to think about this, right? Let's say you have a friend and your friend's addicted to heroin. And one day they come up to you asking for money to buy heroin. Going by this logic that it's not loving to judge people, they would say, give your friend the money for heroin so they can ruin their lives, possibly OD. But by the Bible standard, you should yell at your friend and say, get off this stuff. And I think for most people, if you think about it like that, you can't really argue against the logic. But some people are stupid. So they'll say, but doesn't Jesus himself say, judge not? Yeah, yeah, Matthew 7 verse 1, judge not lest ye be judged. And some people might think that's a real gotcha. Jesus says not to judge people right there, right? Wrong. What Jesus is saying there is a part of a larger paragraph. Let's read the whole thing. Judge not that you be not judged. Sounds like he's saying not to judge. Then he says, for with that judgment, you will be judged. And with what measure you measure others, it will be measured to you. Why beholdest you the mote, that means like splinter, that's in your brother's eye when you have a whole plank of wood in your own? How will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote from your eye when behold, you have a beam in your own? You hypocrite. First, take out the beam from your own eye and then you will be able to see clearly to cast the mote out of your brother's eye. So if you read this in context, context, Jesus is actually saying to judge others. He says, judge not lest you be judged. But the reason he's saying that is not to tell you to stop judging, but to be aware that when you judge someone else, God is going to judge you by that same standard, which you judge someone else for. So if I tell my son, stop smoking cigarettes, but I myself smoke a pack a day, God's going to judge me for that. I'm committing a sin. If I tell someone, stop being a coomer, but I'm cooming 11 times a day. That's a sin. I'm being a hypocrite. Then he gives this parable. Imagine you're sawing a log with a chainsaw or something, right? And suddenly this wood flies out and it hits you and your brother in the eye. Your brother gets a little splinter in their eye and you get this whole log in your eye, basically, and you're bleeding out. Are you in a right mind to be able to pick out the little splinter in your brother's eye? No, you literally only have one eye. What if you end up blinding your brother because you can't see clearly. And so what Jesus is saying is judge, but make sure that if you are judging someone and you're trying to help someone overcome their issues, their problems in their life, that you don't suffer from those same problems. If I'm a heroin addict and I try to help someone get off heroin, I'm just going to end up relapsing even further into my heroin addiction. I don't even know how to be clean myself. How can I help someone else be clean? Clean. It's impossible. It's retarded. Like that's it's illogical. To conclude the video, when someone brings up something like you're not being loving by judging people, or Jesus says, Thou shall not judge, a lot of the time these people have been misinformed by worldly Christianity, progressive Christianity, these churches that refuse to teach the bad news of the gospel so that they can maintain followers. But in doing this, they lose the whole message because they're only professing half of it. And it's our job as Christians to spread the full message of Christianity to people. Because the fact is that you can't understand the necessity of why we need a savior, why Jesus died for us, why it's so important that God loves us, when you can't understand that we've done so much evil stuff in the meager amount of time that we've been alive, that we're worthy of hell through three times over. But when you understand that, then you understand how powerful it is that Jesus went to hell in our place. So that's all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Back on earth, people too mad on the internet. That makes you question your intellect. Does your every thought need attention? Yes. I understand that you took a breath, took a shit, took a fucking limit's test. Saw a new movie, wasn't too impressed. Would do anything for the bluest check. In the end, what's the purpose you serving? Do you want to be upset to solve the problems you